This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Altius, Fortius, Snowius, three. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Well, the Winter Quadrennial International Sporting Event, Quis, continues its history, and let's go to that. The first Winter Quis in Canada happened in 1988 in Calgary. They previously had a Summer Quis in Montreal. In both cases, Canada won zero golds, but they took surplus funds from Calgary due to TV and sponsorship and plowed it into their sports programs. By the time Quis returned to Canada in 2010, they won 25 medals. $270 million in federal and provincial funds was secured for the Calgary Games, $324 million generated for TV rights. The total cost for Calgary Quis was $829 million. Marquee events, ice hockey and figure skating, were scheduled for U.S. primetime, but ABC lost $60 million on the deal. They would cede this to CBS for the next games after owning Quis for decades. Tickets were an issue after it was discovered that 50% of the top tickets went to sponsors and IOC officials. Yet again, weather was an issue with winds kicking temps up to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. The use of snow equipment resulted in the death of Austria's team doctor who got knocked into a snow grooming machine and was killed instantly. This was not the last time such a thing happened. Alberto Tombo of Italy won two skiing events and would eventually win gold at three Quis games. Katarina Witt won another gold for figure skating and then went pro, a rarity for an East German athlete. Men's figure skating had the Battle of the Bryans with U.S. Boitano barely beating Canada order for the gold. U.S. speed skater Dan Jansen competed hours after his sister died of leukemia. He fell in two different events and would not win gold until 1994. Two examples of true amateur athletics. Eddie the Eagle Edwards of Britain placed last in both ski jumping events and became a celebrity for doing so. There was also a recent biopic. The Jamaican bobsled team, the first time their country competed in Winter Quiz, became hits even though they barely competed and they too got a biopic of sorts, Cool Runnings. The Soviet Union returned to the top medal spot. Calgary was the first winter quiz to truly be successful, partly due to reduced restrictions on sponsorship, and four additional demonstration sports which extended its length. Curling, for the first time since 1932, disabled skiing, will repeat from 1984, freestyle skiing, and short track skating. Three of them would eventually be added to quiz proper, and the disabled skiing continued in the Paralympic Games. 1,423 athletes from 57 countries competed in 46 events. 1992 Winter Quiz was held in Albertville, France, and CBS took over U.S. Winter Quiz coverage after ABC had owned it for decades. Calgary had shown that Winter Quiz was still viable and profitable. At one point, the IOC had entertained pulling the plug on the Winter Quiz. So seven cities bid for the Games. With the fall of the USSR, Germany competed as a united country for the first time since 1964, winning the most medals. Croatia and Slovenia competed as separate teams as did the Baltic states. Many of the former Soviet republics competed together as the United Team. Albertville was established as costing two billion dollars to put on. Freestyle skiing, moguls, short track speed skating, and women's biathlon became official sports. Annalise Koberger of New Zealand became the first to get the gold from the southern hemisphere in a winter event which was women's slalom. Christy Yamaguchi and Midori Ito became the first Asians to win medals in women's figure skating, and probably why two of the three U.S. competitors in the current Winter Games are Asian. They idolize Yamaguchi. There was another deadly accident involving a snow groomer. Swiss skier Nicholas Bocate collided with one. 1,801 athletes from 64 countries competed in 57 events, a huge increase. Three demonstration sports were tried out, curling again, freestyle skiing, which is aerials and ski ballet, and speed skating. Speed skiing. Speed skiing, which is generating a top speed during a run, which involved another death and was not attempted again. The gold medal winners made it to 229 kilometers per hour men and 219 kilometers per hour women. 
A major change occurred in Winter Quiz at this point. The IOC determined that interest in the Winter Games were undermined by holding them the same year as Summer Quiz, so they began staggering them, with the next Winter Quiz held in 1984 in Lillehammer, Norway. Of course, for those athletes training their entire lives to peak at just the right time, mm -hmm. the IOC also wanted to avoid more Eddie the Eagles and cold runnings, or cool runnings, so stricter qualifying rules were implemented. The big story at Lillehammer was Tanya Harding versus Nancy Kerrigan and the infamous clubbing incident. We will skip the details, but you can check out the recent biopic about that. In the end, neither won the gold. Freestyle skiing expanded to aerials at its official sport. Short track skating saw Derek Campbell celebrate a bronze win when he had not actually completed the race. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I won, wait! Uh, and he wound up in fourth. 1,300, or sorry, 1,700, 37 athletes from 67 countries competed in 61 events, and starting with this squeeze, demonstration events were out. Ooh. They just were like, either you're in or you're not, we're not going to play around with them. Russia won the most gold medals, but Norway had the most medals overall. A return to Asia in 1998 for the winter quiz in Nagano, Japan. Curling returned and became an official sport, with Switzerland winning the men's tournament and Canada the women's event. Snowboarding was added as the ex-gamesification of quiz continued. Women's hockey was also added, with the U.S. winning the gold. The U.S. men were not even on the podium. For the first time, NHL players were allowed in. Surya Bonnele, a French women's figure skater, did a backflip and landed on one blade, the only time this has ever happened. Tara Lipinski was the youngest individual winner of gold, age 15, in Winter Quiz. She's now paired with Johnny Weir as NBC skating commentators. Bjorn Dali of Norway won three gold medals in Nordic skiing, becoming the most decorated Winter Quiz athlete with eight gold medals and 12 medals overall. In a of course he did moment, Snowboarder Ross Rabagliati of Canada won the gold medal after initially being disqualified for testing positive for marijuana. Dude! 2,176 athletes from 72 countries competed in 68 events. Germany topped the medal count. 2002 brought Winterquist back to the U.S. at Salt Lake, Utah. A bribery scandal tainted the event to some extent because cities... Uh, had always been applying to, to, to get to Quise, had been bribing the IOC for decades. It always happened. But this was more obvious than not, and they made a fuss about it. Despite this, huge success overall, topping the number of athletes, events, countries, ratings, and marketing. Leanne Rimes and the Morbin Tabernacle Choir performed at the opening ceremony. There was additional security for the event, since 9-11 was only six months earlier. Janika Kostelik won three golds and a silver in alpine skiing, the first for Croatia and the first triple gold by a woman. Skeleton returned for the first time since 1948. German Georg Hockel won singles luge and became the first athlete to win the same event in five Quis games. Which he had a little advantage there in the fact that now that, that there was a brief like two-year break there. Exactly. Sarah Hughes won the golden figure skating after heavily favored Michelle Kwan fell during her performance. There were dual gold medals in pairs figure skating when a judging scandal arose, after which a new system of scoring was implemented. China won their first gold medals in short track skating. Australia and the Southern Hemisphere got their first gold in short track when Stephen Bradbury saw his competition crash in front of him, not once, but twice, in two different heats. <laughs> like, he was behind and everybody else crashed, and he's like, I guess I won. <laughs> Australia got a second gold in women's aerials. After a 50-year absence from the top spot, Canada won men's hockey, beating the U.S. The same thing happened in, the, in terms of the Canadian women. A large number of athletes were disqualified for doping. The closing ceremonies had a plethora of stars. Kiss, Willie Nelson, Sting, Dave Matthews Band, NSYNC, and Bon Jovi, among others. 2,399 athletes from 78 countries competed in 78 events, and Norway returned to the top medal spot. Back to Europe for 2006 and Torino, Italy. After all the bribery issues in 2002, IOC members were forbidden from visiting potential host cities. A selection college was used. 
New sports included mass start biathlon, team sprint cross-country skiing, snowboard cross, and team pursuit speed skating. And the X gamesification is complete. Latvia won its first medal with a bronze in the luge. A Chinese figure skating pair attempted a throw quadruple salkow jump, never successfully completed in competition and failed, but got the silver for doing so. Combined alpine skiing was a mess with many disqualifications, including Bodie Miller, who is known for partying too much. Lindsay Jacobellis fell in snowboard cross at the very end of the race, doing an unnecessary stunt celebrating her premature win. 2,508 athletes from 80 countries competed in 84 events. Germany returned to the top medal spot. Back to the Great White North in 2010 and Vancouver. There's a lot of local opposition to this, which created tensions overall. Queese decorations were toned down after protesters ripped them up. Uh, First Nations groups also protested the use of their symbols. Georgian luger Nodar Kumachoderi, and I butchered that, died during a training run on day one of the games, forcing a change in the track layout. Russia did terribly in terms of medals, ending up in sixth place. Some believe the current doping scandals were started after this this terrible uh, result. Canada. Never having won a gold in their home country, went on to top the medal count with 14 of them, although the U.S. actually won the most overall. Ski cross was added to the list of sports. Women's luge was not, which created a big fight. It would be added the next time. Two silver medals were awarded in men's biathlon due to an exact tie to the tenth of a second. First golds in skating, China won their first in pairs. Canada won their first in ice dancing, breaking a European 34-year streak. South Korea won their first in women's skating. Japan won their first medal, bronze, in men's skating. Apollo Anton Ono finished his quiz career with short track skating in eight medals. 2,566 athletes from 82 countries competed in 86 events. In 2014, quiz moved to Sochi, Russia, and a lot of controversy. It had a final budget of $51 billion. The next largest was $44 billion in Beijing. And corruptions by officials was a possible cause. LGBT athletes were concerned over recent government actions against their class. Local ethnic groups believed Sochi was the site of a genocide in the 19th century and wanted the event moved. More and more athletes, particularly from Russia, were discovered doping. New sports included... Figure skating team event, women's ski jumping, ski half pipe, team relay luge, ski slope style, snowboard slope style, and snowboard parallel special slalom. I think refrigerator magnets were involved in this. Let's keep changing the words around. Bodie Miller, who was 36, became the oldest, and Michaela Schifrin, 18, the youngest skiers to win medals. Men's figure skating medals were all won by those of Asian descent for the first time. The U.S. won ice dancing for the first time with Merrill Davis and Charlie White. 2,873 athletes from 88 countries competed in 98 events. Now, again, I want to remind you, as we go into the next games, I will do be doing this daily blog of the PyeongChang Games on the SFPPN website. And I will be doing my best to avoid watching the winter uh, quiz Please. events. I will be doing many other things instead. (laughs) And you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.